Etrigan and Jason Blood are a demon and a knight respectively, and the story of their origin begins 500 years ago. Jason Blood was a knight fighting alongside Merlin. He was looking for glory, but instead all he saw was his brother in arms die. The battle was against Destiny, a man who was using psychic terror to gain power and make himself into a god. He had created a dreamstone using black magic. Using this, he was able to give people horrific nightmares, both at night and during the day, and then feed off their fear and add to his own power. Most of the knights who tried to fight Destiny discovered this ability, as he had the power to warp a person's mind and make them see monsters wherever they looked, and so they attacked and killed their own allies, believing them to be demons. Those that were not affected by this power fell victim to Destiny's other, more practical magic. It was clear that mere mortals could not defeat Destiny, he was just too great in power. But this did not deter Jason Blood, and he attacked Destiny directly. And he did come the closest of all the knights, but before he could land the killing blow, he was run through of a sword by Destiny and mortally injured. It seemed magic was not all Destiny was proficient in. Essentially, the battle was lost, until Merlin stepped into the fray and summoned the mighty demon Etrigan. Etrigan is a powerful demon with magical powers and mastery over Hellfire. Merlin offered him his freedom from Merlin's care if he defeated Destiny, which he quickly agreed to. Destiny was powerful, but so was Etrigan, and it was a bloody battle between the two, but eventually Etrigan was able to defeat Destiny and become the victor. Though he did not kill Destiny entirely, it seemed he was too great in power to truly be killed. You haven't won, Merlin. This isn't over. I swear it. But still, he was defeated and Etrigan wanted his freedom. But Merlin went back on this deal and instead of granting him his freedom, he imprisoned him in Jason Blood's body. Merlin's magic fused the two together, making them as one, two beings sharing the same body. The rules of this arrangement aren't very clear. Essentially, Jason Blood can summon Etrigan magical chant. Gone, gone, the form of man. Rise the and when Etrigan is done being in control, he can turn back into Jason Blood with a similar chant. Since the battles fought and won, Jason Blood with me is done. And though only one of them is in control at any given time, they do both seem to be aware of what happens while the other is in control. Now I have wondered why Etrigan doesn't just stay in control. He is a demon after all, and they aren't typically an honorable sort, and you can't see them agreeing to a body share arrangement and he could easily just not turn back into Jason Blood and keep control of the body. The only logic I can see is that Etrigan is only interested in fighting and violence. He revels in this when Jason Blood summons him, but as soon as the battle is won, he turns back into Jason Blood. So we can only assume that Etrigan doesn't want to stay in control because basically he would be bored. He only wants to be alive and exist in the glory of battle. Now, as I said, Jason Blood was mortally wounded and lying on the battlefield bleeding out. But when Merlin fused him and Etrigan together, it magically healed Jason's wound and saved his life. Now Jason seems to hate Etrigan and views him as a dangerous nuisance and never wants to let him have control of their body, as he's scared what he might do. The only reason I came to this dung heap of a casino is to find a relic to keep that monster locked away forever. However, their partnership did save Jason Blood's life and stops him from aging. After all, he is over 500 years old. So, quite frankly, I don't know what he's complaining about. I mean, I'd gladly accept a demon occasionally take control of my body if it made me immortal. In other versions of the character, Jason also has magical power. Fatalov Satampra Zeros. However, in this version, it appears that he has no magic, only Etrigan does. Etrigan's powers are ill-defined, as magic makes one capable of pretty much anything. But he is ageless, super strong, semi-invulnerable, has the power of Hellfire, and is highly skilled in combat and proficient with most weapons, such as axes and swords. Now, as I've said, Jason Blood was a knight, so he is obviously a great warrior as well, and proficient with weapons as well. And that is the story of how their partnership began. Sadly, in this story, we also see how it ends. 500 years after their fusing, the evil sorcerer Destiny manages to return. 500 years I've waited. And they fight him once more. Now, they defeated him the first time they fought, but this time Destiny is ready for them, and he uses his extremely powerful magic to reverse Merlin's spell and separate the two. 
Jason has wanted this for the past 500 years, and now he has it. But his body has returned to the same state it was in before they fused, including the sword wound he suffered on the battlefield. And because of this wound, Jason Blood unfortunately died, killed by the same man that was responsible for Merlin bonding them in the first place. But Jason Blood is now free of Etrigan. He always viewed it as his responsibility to keep him in line and basically stop him from going on a killing spree. But now his burden is lifted. It's a welcome end. Etrigan John Constantine and Zatanna bury Jason Blood next to the village where he was born. Etrigan is still alive and now completely free to live his life, and he reveals that he always respected Jason Blood, and that if he had to be fused with a mortal man, he was glad it was him. Though we were cursed to be slaves to each other, I know of no man I'd want more for a brother. And that is Jason Blood's and Etrigan's origin, and Jason Blood's death. I was actually a little annoyed that they killed Jason Blood because he's such an interesting character and it's a shame to see him go. I mean, I believe they are going to do a sequel and I certainly hope they do because I very much enjoyed this film. But even though he did die and I didn't agree with that, I must admit it did add more of an emotional ending to the film. I've seen different versions of his origin, one where he was fused with Etrigan as a reward. When Camelot finally fell, Merlin decided to keep the demon in the service of humanity and merge the creature with one of King Arthur's noblemen and another where he was fused as a curse. Thou art cursed, Jason Blood, until the day this monstrous deed is atoned. Both times this was done by Merlin, and in this version it seems Merlin did it just to keep Jason Blood alive, perhaps as a reward for his valour on the battlefield, or perhaps he knew that he could trust Jason Blood to do his best to keep the demon Etrigan in line. It's not really made clear why Merlin did this, but all in all, it's not a bad origin. But what do you think of his origin? Do you think they did the character justice? And how do you feel about him dying? Was it a good idea or a bad one? Be sure to let us know in the comments. And I'd just like to say a quick thank you to those of you who've donated to Needlemass Productions page on Patreon. Patreon is a crowdfunding site that is allowing us to make more videos for you each week and helping us to raise funds to adapt comic book stories into short films. And as always, thanks for watching and feel free to subscribe, share, like and comment.